Hi, my name is Paul Brimhall. I work for Carmen Ceiling Technology. We're here today uh, doing a video on the Seltzer uh, Mix Coat Spray Gun, which is this gun right here I'm holding in my hand. And also this gun, uh, the features of this gun are that it uses hoses to spray out our Chesterton Arc SD4i and S3 coating. Um, these are the two hoses we use. Um, we connect those to the gun, and these are the coatings we use. Um, the S2, which we use, is a thin film barrier type coating. Um, it's about 25% ceramic powder. The SD4i, which we're going to show you today, which is this one right here, is a 50% ceramic powder, so the nature of the product is very viscous. So the the purpose of this video is so that we can show you how to set up the gun to spray this very viscous product onto your equipment to provide abrasion resistance and a barrier resistance from uh, one. Okay, so this is the gun we're talking about. It uses pneumatic uh, force to push two different pistons. The product itself, um, the way it works is, if you'll notice the cartridge, one is about twice as large as the other. The product works because it works on a two to one ratio, the A part to the B part. So when I put the cartridge in the gun, if you notice these two pistons right here, one is twice as large as the other. If they push together, of course, that gives us our two to one ratio. So we push with these pistons onto the product, and then as we're pushing through, the product mixes in this post, uh, post-mix tube right here, if you can notice there's little baffles in it. It goes through here and then goes through this tube and then as we're as it ejects out, we, uh, we atomize it with air to create a spray. Now if you notice, one of these hoses is longer than the other one. The reason for that is the hoses as we get them are this length. And what we discovered is they're a little bit longer than we really need, so what we do is we um, we cut them off. The reason we do that is, is the product, in order to spray it, we have to warm it. So when we warm it, we want to retain as much heat in that product as possible because we want to reduce the viscosity of the product so we can get it through the tube. So what we do is we uh, shorten this hose because as the product enters here, of course, it's cooling and then it cools all the whole length of the tube through down to the end. Well, we want to reduce that cooling as much as possible. So what we're, want, what we're going to do is we're going to cut off about this much of the hose <coughs> to create the correct length of hose. So I'm going to basically cut off about this much hose. You can see right here. So I'm going to cut off this much. So it's real simple. I just take my knife and we have a little cutting board we use. I just place it my knife on there, cut it off. I need a nice sharp knife or a razor blade. Just like that. Pull this end of the hose off. Throw this away. Put this end on. Push it on hard. And then we have two hoses approximately the same length. So the way they... Okay, so the hose, if you'll notice, when it's attached to the gun, these two hoses will be approximately the same length. It's not... They don't have to be perfect. But this air side of it attaches, which creates the atomization, attaches to the hose, and then, of course, that's how it runs. So um, we're going to go ahead and show you how we set this up. So come back over here, and I'll show you about the warming. So what I've learned doing this over the last few months is it's really, really important to get the right temperature on the product. So if you notice, we've got a kitchen uh, immersion circulator like you'd use for a sous vide, and we put it in a bucket with our product. So we have these silicone sleeves that you can buy on Amazon. They work really well because the, the cartridges, if you use a plastic bag, will punch a hole in them. So we use these uh, silicone things and we can actually just put the product right down into hot water without uh, getting any water on the product. So if you see the product here, I can pull it out. It's perfectly warm, perfectly um, to the right temperature. So 
what, what temperature do we use? So what I've learned is the product, if you look at the, the product uh, sheet, it says 120 degrees. We want to we wanna be spraying at about 120 degrees. So, so in order to reach 120 degrees, we have to heat it a little bit more because as we put it through the hose and as we, we do what we're going to be doing, it loses a little bit of temperature. So we found that 132, 130, 132 is pretty ideal. So this has creep, crept up on us. So I usually do it right about 132. And the beauty about these immersion circulators is they, they maintain the perfect temperature within probably less than half a degree. One. So one of the things we've learned is that if we take these hoses and warm them a little bit, because what happens is as we put product through this, this hose, it tends to lose heat. So if we can warm this a little bit up to, you know, 130, 140 degrees, we can maintain some of that heat. So what we do is a little real simple. We just use a little, a little uh, uh, space heater and we put our hoses inside of a box uh, after they're cut. We just wrap the little tie around them, throw them in there, and let them stay warm for a little while before we start to, to do our process. Should be about warm enough that you can just barely hold it with your hand. So that's our little arrangement. We just leave the flap on there because it kind of maintains, keeps a little bit of heat in there. What we're going to do warm. now is we're going to actually do a spraying from start to application as we would do it in real life. I'm going to actually spray some product onto a piece of equipment. We just want to show you the complete process from start to finish and how you need to go about it. So if you'll notice down here, I have my gun all set up. What we actually do is we get a piece of this uh, insulation product. You can buy it at Home Depot. It's about 12 inches wide. It works really perfect in this. And we're going to wrap this around the cartridge. The other thing we want to do is be sure and have our gun set up. So I have my air already connected. Um, if you notice on this, there's actually two regulators on the mix pack gun. The top one is um, the product regulator. So all the way up like this is all the way on. All the way down is lowest pressure. So if I take the regulator and push, nothing happens, right? If I'm all the way down as I go up, it, it starts to move a little faster. More pressure is applied. So um, what we want to do is when we're setting it up, take it all the way to the bottom and raise it just a little bit until it's going about that speed. We want to start slow and go up to where our product is spraying correctly. We don't want to be starting high and working our way down. This control right here is the air, so I want to have it just between, um, right around between one and three somewhere, just a little bit above three usually works about the best. Your gun might be a little bit different. Of course, um, you might have a question about, okay, how much uh, capacity of air are we going to use at what pressure so uh, you need to have at least 13 CFM compressor uh, that gives you enough volume to actually do the spraying you need and you need to be able to have about 120 PSI so I'm gonna go ahead and just do the whole process from start to finish so I've got a, I'm all set up here I've got a nice clean surface I've got my air hose right here but I'm actually gonna grab one out of the heater I've got my, uh, my air hose here, my product hose in the heater, I've got my, my uh, product being warmed up, and, I'm, um, and my piece of equipment I'm going to spray is all set up as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and start to finish. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my product. And this one actually still has the plastic on it, so I've got to take the plastic off. <coughs> and I'm going to I'm going to shake it. Shaking is really important, and you'll as you shake it, you'll be able to feel and hear the product sloshing around. So I want to shake it about a hundred times, pretty good. <coughs> Okay. 
Okay, that's about right. Take my product and slide it into my gun, just like that. Okay, I like to just push my piston in just a little bit. <coughs> just like that. Okay, I'm going to go grab my hose. Now what you want to do is put this gun just over your trash container, an empty box, whatever. And as you take this off, you want to have a couple of paper towels handy. Just to wipe if you need to. So as I take this off, a little bit of the product is going to drip out. So I want to be careful to go ahead and put my, uh, my hose on as quickly as possible. But I also want to observe and make sure there's no plugs in the end of this. And one thing you want to remember is I always, as I look at this, if you see it, one side of it looks like a wing, the other side is more straight. The wing always goes down, so it's going to go on like this. So I'm going to pop this off. So you can see there's nothing much coming out, but it looks pretty good. This is a brand new cartridge, so I'm not too concerned about it. Put that on, tighten it down. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is put my insulation over here. I've got some tape handy to do it with. Okay. Now I'm going to push my product through the gun, through the hose, just to see what I've got here. I'm preparing my hose. So you can see the product going through the hose right there. And we got just a little bit. It needs to go through about that fast. If it's not going through that fast, it's not working properly. So we want to be sure it does that. So now I'm going to hook up my air hose. And I'm ready to spray my product. So I'm going to go over to my box here. So you can see it spraying out there. So you want a nice even stream. You don't want it sputtering. It's sputtering just a little bit, but as it warms up the hose, it'll do a little better. So as you can see, it goes on real slowly, not making a loud noise. It's just going on nice and evenly and slowly. And I can really control it. Like for instance, like in the bottom of this groove here, I can angle it back and forth to fill the groove. Over here on this side, get, over, get behind my right shoulder there. Okay, you can see right here, I can spray clear down into this. So as you can see, I'm not blasting away, I'm just putting it on real evenly, real slowly. Totally being able to control it. And the thing I want to do is, I wanna, I'm trying to keep that sugar down all the time. I'm not releasing the trigger. You notice it kind of go, goes on kind of an orange peel, which is fine because it kind of covers up some of the blemishes in the product and the substrate. Right now, see, I'm putting it on pretty fast. As the hose warms and everything starts working together, it actually kind of speeds up a little bit and it starts to go on a lot faster. 
you see how fast it's going on? It's just going on really long. So I can spray. Really control it. So you're getting a good push shot down. So that's how it's supposed to go on, just like that. If it's not going on like that, then you've got a problem. See how soft it goes on, almost like an airbrush. You know, you can soft and easy, and I'm totally controlling it. There's no sag, no issues. Now, if I do kind of get a dri dribble, I can release my trigger halfway, so I'm just pushing air and actually blow a little bit of air on something. See how nice that's going on there? So I'm going to spray around these holes and I'll show you what kind of control I have. I can actually spray around these bolt holes without getting hardly any product in. And I can actually even reduce my air pressure just a tiny bit. So when you get going, you really only have to control air. You really don't have to control your pistons too much. You see how I can put that on there without hardly doing any, no runs, no problems. Fills up all the pits. This is a rough piece of equipment. It's an old irrigation pump. Okay, so we've finished spraying our uh, piece of equipment over there. David shined a pen over on that, okay, over there. And so we're finished, and I want to show you how we take it apart. So we're just going to take our our insulation off real quickly like this, okay? Um, we've got about that much of a cartridge left. We're going to continue on, okay? So what I'm going to do is, first thing I'm going to do is take the air hose, undo that. Now this hose this hose would just throw away. So what I did previously was I took my, I have a little thing of acetone over here and I took my, uh, my um, lid and I just threw it in there and I just keep it clean so I can put it right back on here. So I'm going to set it right there. I'm going to take this end off, put my thing over the trash can, throw it down, wing side down as I told you before. Put that right on there, shove it back, tighten it down. So now everything's gonna stay clean. This hose, my air hose, I wanna keep it because we don't throw that away. So what I do with it is I just put it in my acetone and I just go like this and agitate it. And if I do that right after I've done my spraying, I can keep this hose clean and use it for literally months. So see how clean that is now? I just take and wipe it off. Nice and clean, no coating left on it at all. Both of my ends are nice and clean, okay? Eventually the acetone will kind of soften this, but I can actually cut them off and shorten them a tiny bit. It's not a problem, but that's as good clean. So then I always just cover my acetone with my little cutting board, and I'm good. So now I can take my coating off. See how nice and clean it is? There's no drips, there's no runs. I can literally put that back on the shelf and use it next time.